So we will look at some of these synchronous and asynchronous tasks. As you can see on your screen, these were what we did together in the moment. We had um, 60 minute lessons every week online with each of the three groups at a time that was most appropriate and most convenient to our students. Um, and we asked our students to, to come to those, sorry, our participants, not students. Terrible, Harry, terrible. Um, that's the teacher in me, it always comes through. Uh, the participants came along um, to just be as open as possible um, and to ask as many questions as possible and to speak without fear. So through these uh, different sessions, we were able to look at all sorts of different areas. We looked at eco-anxiety, we looked at climate justice, and we looked specifically at a, a huge problem across the world, but one of the ones that was identified beforehand with, uh, with our, our colleagues in Vietnam, and that was about single-use plastics. Um, and we went through these different stages and we talked to all of the different members of the groups to encourage participation. And within these uh, sessions that we had online, we would have our breakout rooms, which as Neil mentioned beforehand, they started out as kind of five and six minutes, but later they developed to be longer, to be 10 minutes to allow the participants to, to be able to share properly what they were talking about and, and really get into uh, the issues and get into the nitty gritty. We'd then come back and have feedback sessions uh, amongst all of the breakout rooms. And it just, for me personally, to see the growth of the participants throughout the, um, the live sessions was absolutely incredible. You know, at, at first they were a bit shy because maybe they didn't feel they knew enough about the subject. And by the end, they were asking each other what they could do and how they could change this and learning from each other and sharing those ideas with us as well. So they're the synchronous tasks. Look at that, Neil just swiftly moving on to asynchronous tasks. He's, he's a genius, that man, he's an absolute genius. So we had um, a few main asynchronous tasks. We had the a Google form, which was five or six questions based on the session that we had done. They weren't exactly incredibly taxing questions. They were questions to encourage reflection. They were questions that, you know, brought out the basic, um, the nuts and bolts of, of the session, you know, the, just the, the bare bones. And we added the meat with some other areas, including a reflection task, which students were asked to go back and work on, um, on their, in their own journals or, or in their own spaces. Some use online journals, some use the, some were traditional like me. Oh, Harry, you shouldn't be using paper. I'm sorry, I just can't, I can't get away from notebooks. Um, and then they'd, they'd share those reflections in the Jalo groups that you can now see over there. The third part of it was our accountability groups. And these were the, the three individual Jalo groups where the participants would not only talk about their reflections, not only talk about the questions posed in each of the sessions, but they'd also share the progress that they were making. Um, and for me, this was something super special about this particular training course. I've done a number of training courses as a teacher trainer. Um, and this was a really special feeling for me that, you know, on a, on a Thursday at 3 a.m., that a message would arrive. Don't worry, I turn my phone off at night. You know, I'd wake up in the morning, I'd do my morning exercise, my morning yoga, I'd look. And there'd be a message in a Jalo group saying, hey, Harry, today in our classes, we talked about climate justice. Or today in our classes, uh, we did a litter pick. And it was all there in the Jalo group. And we could see as we were going through the course, how the teachers were growing and how they were learning and how they were improving. And it was absolutely mind blowing for me to see this this evolution, um, it's, it seemed almost impossible in, in the first session when we sat down in our groups and, you know, there was a lot of shyness about talking about you know, the first step was what is sustainability, you know, and why is it important to talk about it? And we went from that to delivering, as we'll see in a moment, not just yet, to delivering some lesson plans and action plans. Um, and for me, what I, I really liked as well was 
how the participants adapted the courses they were working on, adapted what they were doing to fit in with the climate crisis. So rather than throwing out the textbook, they were taking the textbook and they were adapting it, which was one of the sessions. Um, and as you can see that, look at that. He's so good. He's so good. Um, so one of the, the main parts of it was updating their own textbooks. And as we can see here, um, one, of the, one of the participants updated their course book in the way that they went to the unit about music. There was lots of talk about all of the new updated textbooks that we have that have a new unit on the climate crisis, which is more positive than it used to be. You know, they're talking about cleaning up a town. But for me, the, the key is not necessarily using that one unit. The key is how you can integrate the climate crisis into all of these other units. And as we can see here, this unit was about music. And what the teacher has done is they've looked at how music is relevant to their students. Yes, they've gone through that music vocabulary, but they've also taken some other pictures and they've looked at the effect of, of music festivals. You know, and it's a, it's a great opportunity here for students to describe these photos, to talk about these photos. What are the environmental issues in these photos? But also to just do those traditional exam tasks where you talk about one and you talk about the other one. So they were, that was one of the main ideas. And from that, we, we jumped into our, our student 